Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on Java native interface and how powerful it is. So we said that Eclipse ID is one of the best IDs and it's uh, we should definitely be able to use JNI and mix Java C or C++ development in Eclipse ID. But uh, the setup, setting up the environment for this mixed development involves uh, many manual steps. And the first step was to install the CD CDT plugin for Eclipse and then write our Java codes and add the native keyword to any method that we want to implement in C or C++. And then the most important part was to configure the external tools so that we can call one of the Java tools that creates the header files. And we said that up to Java 8, we have to use Java Edge hyphen JNI. So we're using Java Edge binary tool that comes from the JDK. And Java Edge acts on a class file, so dot class file. So it acts on the compiled Java files. But after Java 8, so from Java 9 onward, we don't have Java Edge anymore. And we should use Java C hyphen Edge. All right. And what it does, Java C hyphen Edge acts on a dot Java file and it uh, simultaneously compiles the Java file and also creates the native header file. All right. And then, uh, so we said that we run this uh, uh, tool to generate the header files and then uh, we add those header files to our C++ project and create our .cpp files and implement or add the implementations of the methods or functions that are in the header files and create a dynamic library because Java cannot load the static libraries. It can only load dynamic libraries. And then uh, we compile the project to create this dynamic library. And then we have to tell Java where to find this dynamic library. And that is being set by uh, hyphen D java.library.path which is a Java system property. And then uh, after we tell Java where to find it, we also have to tell it when to load this library into memory. And typically we use a static initializer so that the very first time that a particular class is loaded into the memory, uh, if it has any native methods, we want to load also the dynamic library into memory so that we can start using the class. And we looked at the, how to configure the external tool for uh, JDK 8 and I showed you that we just create a new uh, prog a new external tool by pressing this new button here and then point the location to the JDK folder contents home bin uh, Java Edge and then uh, uh, okay and then uh, I said that uh, Java Edge acts on uh, basically class files so we set the working directory to the bin so workspace slash the project name slash the bean folder and then we in the arguments we specify the jni hyphen jni and then the java type name and the java type name returns the fully qualified name of a class file all right so it's the class file not a java file now for jdk 9 we need to and onward jdk 10 11 and etc we need to point it to the java c because we do not have java h anymore and then uh, uh, Java C acts on Java file, not class files, all right? And so we set the working directory, for example, to the workspace. And then in the arguments, we pass in the hyphen H so that we say that not only compile the Java file, also basically create the header file for native methods or native stops. And then we have to tell it where, where to put the generated header files. So we give it a folder a directory and here I'm using a, a basically telling it okay uh, put it in a folder which is called JNI it's in the native project uh, from the workspace and then we have to pa pass the Java Java file that we want to create the header files for so this is not a class file this is a Java file and uh, again so we we cannot use this Java type name in Eclipse because this returns the class file what we want is a Java file. So we have to use the, use the resource parameter. So either resource underscore path or resource underscore location. So the difference here is that when you select a Java file and use resource path, it returns the relative path to the working directory. Okay. 
uh, and then uh, if we use the basically the resource location it returns the absolute path in the operating system wherever the this resource is or this java file is in the up, uh, in the operating system all right uh, so let's head to Eclipse and I'll show you uh, how to do that. So we had this native project, Java project and the test native, which is a C++ project. And we already had some files, test native, test two native. And uh, we wrote uh, some native methods like multiply or speak. And then uh, we created uh, the header files using the Java Edge, basically JDK 8. And then uh, 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 what we did was uh, we created the header file and then added some implementation for the uh, for the those methods like multiply speak. All right. So what I want to do, uh, I want to use the JDK 11 to be able to uh, basically create the header file for this Java class test native. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, basically create a folder here. Let's call this, uh, uh, let's call it, it's a source folder. Let's call it headers. All right. And in the headers, uh, so now I'm going to go to external tools and I'm going to basically create a new one. Let's create a new, let's call this, uh, Java uh, Java C hyphen H, which means I'm using Java C hyphen H. This is just the name. You can name it whatever you want, but I guess Java C hyphen H is a good name. So location, we have to point it to the JDK 9, 10, or 11, or whatever. So I'm going to use the browse file space, and I'm going to go all the way to uh, here. On Mac, we go to the root library, and then we go to Java and Java virtual machines. And I have a, a bunch of uh, JDKs installed. I have JDK 11, 8. These are Oracle JDKs. I have Graal VM, Java 8 and 11. I have JDK 7 and JDK 8, a different update. So 144 update and 121 update, all right? So as you can see in the workspace, I'm using JDK 8, 144 update. But now for the external tool, I wanna go to JDK 11, contents, home, bean and as you can see there is no java edge here anymore so it's just java c so we pointed to the java c and um, i'm going to for the work working directly i'm going to set it to workspace location and uh, this workspace location basically uh, returns the absolute file system path of the workspace root when an argument is specified the absolute file system path of the resource identified by is relative to the path return, right? So we're just going to set it to workspace and in the argument, I'm going to specify that, okay, I want to create the header file and then I want to specify a folder to put the header files into that folder. So I'm gonna say that uh, workspace colon slash go into the test underscore native. This is my C++ project and headers, all right? So this is the uh, path to the basically uh, the headers folder. So I want to directly come uh, create the header file and put it in the headers folder of the C++ project. And then I want to specify which uh, Java file to compile. So what I can do, I can say dot, which means current directory, a slash. So I'm when we say dot, uh, Java automatically knows that I'm specifying a relative path to whatever the working directory is, which is the workspace. And uh, I want to be able to have a general configuration. So whatever Java file I click on and run this external tool, I want to be able to create the header file for that Java file. So because I'm specifying the uh, uh, relative path to the working directory, I use resource, basically path. And uh, let's zoom in here, resource path. And this resource path says returns the workspace relative path of the resource. So if we have resource location, returns the absolute file system path of the resource, all right? So I use resource path and use the dot 
slash which means from the working directory which is the workspace location onward and that's what the resource uh, path does it returns the relative path to the workspace right Re returns the workspace relative path of the resource now obviously you can use the absolute path but just remember because this is not a class file this is a java file we have to uh, specify it as a resource not a java type because java type means the binary the class file all right so resource path so everything is uh, set apply and close and uh, uh, java c hyphen h all right so let's see if i select this uh, test java test native and then uh, try to run my uh, java c hyphen h and uh, as you can see it returns some uh, 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 basically a red message but that's fine you see the header file was generated using jdk 11 so uh, using jdk 11 so jdk 9 10 11 we have to set it this way there is this uh, red message which is not important the header file is successfully generated and uh, the naming convention is again the same uh, it's the package name underscore the class name dot h just as we had with uh, basically java h tool which was the package name underscore java name which is the fully qualified name of the this uh, uh, java class java file so if it was inside another package we have the package hierarchy package one underscore package two underscore class name dot h but the basic uh, code is exactly the same so we, even though my Java project is set for JDK 8, I use the Java C tool from JDK 11 as an external tool to basically uh, generate the header file. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Please ex uh, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.